My mother gave me the name Rogerio, and then my father gave me the name Patrick. When I was small, I used both of them, but I liked the one my father gave me, Patrick, Patrick Chumuso. My father had come from Mozambique with the migrant workers to the mines of South Africa. When I was 15, I started to work underground. I became a man in that place. The plant that provides oil for the whole country. A hard place. I always thought, Patrick, you are from outside. Be smart. Keep your head down. For yourself and for your family. I worked hard, pulled myself up, made good friends and a good life. I was cruising, just cruising. The Germans put 30 of us in one cattle truck with two guards. It was quite dark inside, and we took out our saws and started sawing the board on one end of the truck. There were another four boys, and everybody took his turn. After about an hour and a half of sewing, we managed to loosen the board and took it inside. Around about midnight, the train came to a large goods station where it slowed down a bit and we decided to go. We jumped. After we got to our feet, both of us ran across about three rails and hid underneath a stationary train waiting till our train passed and to see whether all is clear for us to get up and dash for freedom. Everything seemed quiet, so we got up, ran back again across the rails, jumped the fence. We changed into our homemade civic clothes. Both of us looked more like two masqueraders than anything else. 
we stayed in the field till the day broke out. Then we found in the vicinity a stream where we washed ourselves and made ready for our next move. We knew roughly where we were and went to the station. There we found a cinema that was open and went inside to hide ourselves until came the time for us to catch the train to Dresden. From now on, everything went according to our plan. To get to Prague, to get in touch with the Czech underground people who would help us to get either to Switzerland or to some other neutral country. Before the dreaming, the Australian continent was a flat, featureless place, devoid of life. Then giant beings came down from the sky, came from across the sea and emerged from within the earth. With their arrival, the dreaming began and life was born. In the north of Australia, the Junkerwall sisters gave birth to humanity In Central Australia, Itakawara broke the marriage laws and as punishment was turned into stone, forever entombed in the landscape. On the east coast, Bayami shaped the landscape and when his work was complete, he stepped onto a mountain and back into the sky. As they moved across the land, their giant bodies shaped the earth, creating rivers and mountain ranges. In everything they touched, they left their essence, making the landscape sacred to those who honour the dreaming, the first Australians. All began just south of the Great Limpopo River, in a valley nestled in the foothills of the Libombo Mountains. And in that valley lived a large pride of African lions ruled by a magnificent male called Mohul.
This is my son, Ben, malaria. And this is Mary's son, George. Mary's boy. And these are just some of the children I met in Mozambique, where both of our sons died. This one is Sebastian, a little bit of a joker. <laughs> this is Anicia. She wanted to be a teacher. And Daniel here played the clarinet. All of them, all these sons and all these daughters are all now dead. Would you like us to make another appointment with the committee in a year's time and come back then with half a million more photographs? Come <laughs> on.